quick video, friends. I am with the magician himself, Doug Gray, Killer Bee Customs. And we're gonna talk real quick in this video about fighting chairs, what the purpose is, why they work so well, and how to use them effectively. So magician, Doug, first off, why would somebody, if they, have, if they don't have a fighting chair, why would they consider having one on the boat? Well, first of all, you, you check out the, today's conditions. It's a little sporty out here. It's hard to stand up. Yep. Sitting down, you're not going to fall all over the place. So it's fighting chairs. It's almost essential on a day like today. It is essential on a day like today. And your ability to actually fight the fish is much better in terms of the leverage that you can get with the fish versus, say, standing up or somewhere else. I mean, like, standing up versus fighting chair, a lot more you got your leg oh, power in it. More, more stability and you can use your legs a lot more with a with a fighting chair. Yeah. All right, so if someone says, all right, what's the proper technique for a fighting chair? What is the proper technique? What do we need to be aware of? What are the to-dos and not to-dos? Well, one of the most important things you do, well, no matter how you're fighting the fish, whether it be stand up or in a chair, is to level wind that line. So you gotta be very, uh, aware that you don't want that your line piling up on a spool in one spot. That's right. So you're gonna use your as you're holding on to the rod with your left hand. You're gonna use your left thumb to guide the line back and forth as you're winding. As you're winding, that's right. Right. Otherwise, you could get stuck on you, and that's really bad. Yeah, uh, you lose fish tackle and patience. Yep. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. What else do we need to know? Uh, well, this fighting chair is really cool. Uh, you have two different types of rods, basically. You have a, a long butt, which is built for a fighting chair. Okay. And you have these shorter butt rods, which are also made for stand-up tackle. Right. So what we have here on this chair is this gimbal flips upside down, so it will accept a shorter butt rod. If you didn't have this type of gimbal, you and you put a short butt in there, your real handle is going to hit the chair. That's right. So you're way too low. So you got to have this swinging gimbal, depending on the butt of the rod. Okay, I like it. What are some other best practices we need to be aware of? Well, you wanna, it, it's really helpful to have somebody actually driving the chair. Okay. If that fish is running off on a corner, right. you're gonna wanna turn that chair to face the fish or face the way the line's coming off the rod. Very and advantageous, also, yeah. Also, when we get close for the end game, for a gap shot or to boat the fish, we're gonna, we're gonna do that on a corner, one corner or the other of the boat, and we want that rod pointed at that corner so the mate is able to get a hold of the line, the leader, lift the fish a little bit and get a good gap shot. So ideally we want to gas the fish on the corner of the stern. Absolutely, okay. yes. Okay, all right. It's difficult to do it right straight off the stern. Yes. If you get that fish swimming up beside the boat, he can come right across his shoulder and get a good clean shot on it. Got it, that makes a lot of sense. Anything else that we should know as we're using a fighting chair or anything? Oh, I know one thing. It's about the talk about the up-down process when you're lifting and winding. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the idea, and, and everybody that's been fishing or seen a fishing show has seen people pull a rod. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand the purpose of that. Yep. The purpose is you're, when you lift that rod, you're bringing that fish two or three feet closer to you. And the idea with winding is to wind back to that spot. Right. Then you lift the fish again and wind back to that spot. Just bouncing the rod up and down is not, it's, it's only doing one thing and it's tiring out the angler. It's not doing anything for the fish. Yeah. So if at any time you are in a chair and a fighting harness or anything, if you can steady wind on that fish, then there's no need to pump. We shouldn't be pumping. Exactly. Right. But if we can't get any ground, we lift up and right before we start going down, we start winding start again, right? Before you come down. You always, one thing to remember about that, and it's very simple, and it, it's a great way to remember what you're doing, is to keep your rod bent. Just watch your rod tip. As long as that rod is bent, you've got sufficient pressure on that fish. Bent rod, we're good. Slack rod, no potentially good. some problems. That's right. Anything else we need to know about fighting chairs and how to use these things the right way in your mind there, magician? Uh, if you've got a really, really big fish, you can put a bucket harness on, or okay. you, can put, you can use a stand-up harness, and you're gonna clip, actually clip into the reel that's gonna allow you to really use your legs. You oh, wow. actually stand up on the footrest, oh, wow. and lay back on it ah. as you're pulling that fish to you, and then stand up and I can see how that down. would be pretty wild. That way you're not pulling with your arms. Yeah, cool. 
Well, hopefully that gives you a great sense of some of the to do's and not to do's when using a fighting chair offshore. As always, if you want to come join us offshore, make sure you do join us on a speechless, amazing times just like today. We've caught lots of fish already. So make sure you join us. Check us out, Pirates Cove Arena. Subscribe to the channel. Until the next time, my friends, stay salty.